Hi, everybody. This is Gad Saad. Uh, I returned yesterday from a one-day trip with my family to Burlington, Vermont. Now, some of you may know, uh, this past summer, I identified the place that is absolutely the most woke place in the universe. And I'm uh, proud to say that it's my former city of Ithaca, New York. Many of you know that I did my MS and PhD at Cornell University, located in Ithaca, New York. I had gone back this past summer uh, to honor my former doctoral supervisor, who was shortly uh, retiring from Cornell. Uh, several of his former doctoral students had gotten together to honor him. And uh, Ith Ithaca is a beautiful town, but the, the, the level of wokeness is truly heartening. It was just wonderful to see signs everywhere that you know support uh, all sorts of woke positions uh, and then yesterday when i visited burlington vermont uh, it's not it's not quite as uh, woke as uh, uh, ithaca but it's sure up there so if you know we get to downtown every storefront every street corner every you know sidewalk on with chalk every car uh, every church has you know a BLM sa sign, trans rights are human rights, trans day of visibility. When we walk into a bookstore, there's a whole section on that. And so I, I just, I felt safe. I felt good to be there because I knew that, I mean, Vermont has a huge problem with, you know, the daily erasure of people of color and trans people. So it's, it's good to see, you know, uh, white, progressive Vermonters standing up for communities of color. So that that was good. So that's number one. Kudos to Burlington on being such a progressive place and so progressive that there were tons of homeless people everywhere, which is kind of surprising because you would think that where there is an ethos of socialism, there is typically a unicornia. There's, there's uh, you know, people live completely free. People live fully satiated in every possible way and so to see homelessness noble homelessness was maybe surprising so that's let me just because i had on the list here a whole bunch of things i want to discuss uh it, oh if you're wondering why my hair is this color it's because as as you know i explain in many places and most notably in the parasitic mind that although the the original place that i discuss aposomatic coloring is in this book my 2007 book Aposomatic coloring is uh, a form of coloring that evolved to ward off potential predators. So, for example, in the Amazon, you have Amazonian frogs that are very vivid, which you would think, well, how would they evo evolve conspicuous coloring when they typically you would expect that as a predator avoidance mechanism, you'd evolve camouflaging? Well, as I explained, uh, aposomatic coloring evolves because it's saying I'm going to advertise myself and if you can see me very vividly that means you probably want to stay away from me and so then I use that concept to argue that the reason why so many noble progressive people have colored hair is because they are demonstrating in this case their venomous fierce ideological stance right so don't approach me you know heteronormative patriarchal pig I bite and so in in honor of that I always like to demonstrate my progressive uh, street creds so I, I hope you appreciate my the last one I did for, for Ithaca was a darker but I think this one kind of uh, plays off my eyes better so there you go number two oh she's fantastic she would get a F in my undergraduate course uh, Alyssa Heinerscheid, the Bud Light VP of Marketing, and you can go on my uh, Twitter link to see her talk about, you know, she was explaining why she used the gorgeous woman. I, I, I mean, I have to say I'm married, but I'm very attracted to this woman. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney, you know, the, the woman who has a penis, you know, invited to the White House for, you know, to honor women. Uh, is now the spokesperson for Nike Women, uh, who's also the spokesperson for Bud Light. Uh, so as a professor of marketing, almost 30 years a professor, I was very interested in hearing what Alyssa 
what is her name? Heinerscheid, Bud Light VP of Marketing. So she's a marketing expert. Why she would have, what would be the logic behind why they chose this beautiful woman, Dylan Mulvaney, to uh, to be the spokesperson? And she explained that, you know, we wanted, you know, the Bud Light brand is dying. And, you know, we wanted to, I'm paraphrasing what she said. We wanted to, uh, um uh, you know, spice it up, do something that's, you know, what she called it inclusive marketing. So in marketing 101, you learn about the concepts of segmenting the marketing, the market, and then targeting the market, right? That's 101, right? And I'm, by the way, for those of you who are a bit more advanced in your marketing knowledge, the way that you segment a market is using a, a statistical technique called cluster analysis. The idea is that you want to create segments or clusters of people that are very similar to each other within the segments and different from each other across. And so you use a statistical algorithm called cluster analysis. But the general idea is that you segment the market thinking that there are reasons why that particular segmentation is actionable and then you target that market. So if let's say you were trying to increase sales for Bud Light because it's failing. Well, you would try to study, well, why is it failing and how can we uh, develop some strategies, positioning strategies, redesign of the product strategies, advertising strategies, promotional strategies that might help us uh, improve our position in the market. And of course, what this person said, there is no more actionable way. So trans people make up, depending on the stats, about 0.01% of the population. Right. So from a perspective of just overall market size, that's not a very big market. So if you were trying to target trans drinkers of Bud Light, you're talking about an it, it's beyond minuscule. It's statistically insignificant. OK, but now if let's say you're saying, well, no, we want we're not necessarily trying to target trans beer drinkers, but we're trying to target the the typical beer drinker of Bud Light, uh, hoping to show them that we're very progressive, we're very inclusive, and that might cause them to, you know, drink more beer because they see, oh, look, we're using a trans woman as the endorser. Well, of course, uh, it's probably not the case that most beer drinkers are particularly attuned to, you know, tra trans allyship. So from every conceivable way that you could look at any knowledge we know from marketing strategy, it can't be a optimal strategy. For example, you might argue, oh, there aren't enough women who drink beer. And since women constitute 50 plus percent of the human species, well, then let's find strategies to increase female beer drinking and to do so we would let's use female endorsers but let's use female endorsers in this case who happen to be biological males that's probably going to alienate many of our female customers okay so the old adage well somewhat new adage of go woke go broke certainly seems to apply here but again from this VP of marketing's perspective, what is more important is to appear as though you're being inclusive rather than actually doing things that the fiduciary responsibility of maximizing uh, your shareholders' profits, okay? But again, according to ESG, right, the, the woke metrics, she's doing the right thing, right? Because she is being, she has social consciousness. She is fighting for trans rights. Now, again, please note, I don't need to keep repeating it. I'm as about as socially liberal as one can be. I support the right of every individual to live free of bigotry. And I would certainly be the guy in high school who would have stood up to a bully who's bullying someone who appears to be in a marginalized uh, situation. That doesn't mean that I don't abide by logic, reason, common sense. So if I'm a professor of marketing and I'm analyzing this strategy, I'm saying, 
Well, based on everything that we know of marketing, that's probably not a good strategy. Okay, so that's point two. Let's move on to point three. There's a clip. So, you know, Dylan Mulvaney, you know, the, the, the woman with a penis who's now in, in every ad as a woman. There's another person who's straight out of uh, Silence of the Lambs. It puts the lotion on the skin. This is Jeffrey March. If you haven't seen this person, please go and see it straight out of my, straight out of anybody's nightmare. The, the level of creepiness that this person exhibits is simply breathtaking. So it's got nothing to do with them being non-binary or two-spirited or trans or whatever. The level of creepiness, the way he does that smile, you will respect us. I mean, it's, I, I can't even, I can't even muster that kind of creepiness. He's got, he does the sardonic fake smile. And, you know, if your parents are not treating you right, write to me, contact me. Some might say that's kind of creepy to be speaking to children. Now, maybe his, their heart is in the right place. But in any case, they, there's a clip that was just released where they joined forces the two ladies, Dylan Mulvaney and Jeffrey Marsh, I'm just looking for the name, uh, joined forces in a clip. It, it's just unbelievable. Go watch it. It's on my uh, Twitter feed. And then finally, uh, this is Tom Temprano, some, some whatever, some ally of whatever. So he wrote, so proud of the students at my alma mater, San Francisco State University. I'm disgusted that a virulently transphobic person like Riley Gaines would be welcomed by anyone at his university. And he goes on, right? So for those of you who don't know, let me take off my progressive woke wig. Just go like this now because it's starting to itch. Uh, this guy is referring to Riley Gaines. Now, for those of you who don't know, she's a female swimmer. Who from the University of Kentucky who came out and said, "Hey, you know Leah Thomas, you know the the woman, the six foot four, two hundred twenty pound woman, whatever, which until very until recently was competing as a male, uh, and was ranked I don't know four fourth five hundred, and then simply said, I am a woman, and then that's it. That you have to understand chromosomes, physiology, anatomy, hormones." behavioral patterns, sexual selection, Darwin, sexually reproducing species across endless species, sexual dimorphism, all those things go away. Once someone says, says I self-identify as a woman, they become a woman, period. Trans women are women. So then Leah Thomas, the woman, competes in female swimming, crushes all the records, beats everybody, and everybody goes along with it. And Leah Thomas then changes in the dressing room of women. Now she has she happened to have a penis shaped vagina, but only transphobes would be upset. Like those women, those young women who felt uncomfortable changing with the woman Leah Thomas, and then Riley Gaines has the courage to say, wait a minute, this is not right. This is not, I, I mean, we are we are biological women who are losing against a biological male. That's not right. We are biological women. We don't feel comfortable changing in, a, in, a, in, a, in the shower, you know, in the locker room with a man. Tom Temprano doesn't, can't have theory of mind to say, you know, I, I can get that. I, I can totally understand that trans people exist trans people have a right to live free of bigotry of course but you know maybe the 99.99 percent of biological women who are harmed by this apparent situation i can understand their position no riley Gaines apparently is a extremist transphobe and so when she went riley Gaines, to speak at this guy's university alma mater and had to be barricaded with cops and protection for hours and they're you know being you know threatening her and so on he doesn't say oh my god this is so outrageous that those activists 
would be so violent towards her in a society that supposedly supports free speech. No, he is so proud of those activists for having shouted down and made this person feel threatened and having her barricaded for three hours. So I wrote, in a sane world free of bigotry, hate-filled biological women would jump at the chance of being pummeled in sports by women with penises in support of the fact that trans women are women, period. Trans women are women, trans women are women, trans women are women, period. This is when I retweeted his stuff. So he came on my radar. I retweeted him in support of his position because trans women are women. Riley Gaines is, is indistinguishable from Himmler. What does he do? His account no longer exists. I can't count the number of people that once they've entered my radar and I've, I've shined the light on their position, they either block, their, block me, protect their tweets, delete their tweets, <clears throat> and or delete their accounts. Why would they do that? If Tom Temprano is on the right side of this issue, right? If he is genuinely disgusted by this, by the way, this young woman, Riley Gaines, is very, very soft-spoken. I mean, she's she's a young woman who's very tepid, who's, who speaks very quietly, very politely, who's basically saying, you know, maybe you could understand that we feel aggrieved by the fact that a massive biological male is destroying women's sports. Maybe you can understand that we feel uncomfortable having a guy with his dangling penis, I mean, dangling vagina that is in penis shape in the, our locker room. Do most Can most people understand that we should have different... No, no, no. He's a woman. She's a woman. That's it. She's identified as a woman. Penis disappears. So if he's on the right side... Why does he delete his account? Why doesn't he come after me and say, you are a bigot, you transphobe. I'm going to debate you. No, because that's what happens with religious fervor. That's what happens with parasitized minds. That's The fact that minds can be parasitized is as old as the history of humanity. It's what's new today, as I explained in the parasitic mind, is the novel the new idea pathogens and how they proliferate so quickly and then infect every nook and cranny of our societies right in canada i don't know if you saw it i also retweeted this it must be somewhere on my twitter feed there is a new law whereby if next to a drag show or what whatever twerking drag you say offensive remarks that you can be guilty of fine of $25,000. What does it mean, offensive remark? How is that actionable legally? I mean, it, it's literally that was the thing. Any homophobic, transphobic comments or offensive remarks. In a free society, there is no such legal code. Holocaust denying is the most offensive thing that anyone could ever utter. I get hit with endless insults and on any given day that are outlandishly more offensive than anything that might be said about twerking drag queens at, that are targeting children. And yet, I move on. Because in a free society, you have to be willing to be exposed to offensive remarks. So people wonder, why do I spend my time fighting these things? Oh, you're, is it because you, you don't like trans people? Nothing could be further from the truth. I don't like authoritarianism. I don't like religious fervor. Religious fervor can come in the shape of ex uh, Hasidic Jewish folks in the neighborhood where I'm going to have rotisserie chicken later. It could come from Islamic extremists. It could come from climate alarmists who are completely religious in their fervor. It could come from trans activists. I am committed to logic, to reason, to individual dignity, to deontological principles that define what a free, enlightened society should be. When people are celebrating violent 
pro protests against a young woman who is aggrieved by the fact that a biological male is destroying her ability to compete fairly in swimming, we are in the abyss of infinite darkness. Speak up. Don't sit quietly. This has nothing to do specifically with trans issues or climate. It has to do with the fact that humans are cowardly. Humans have an infinite capacity to be parasitized by bad ideas. Humans are not typically likely to speak out against insane nonsense. They just go along with it. They don't want to bring attention to themselves. Riley Gaines had the courage to speak up. And then this man says, yeah, yeah, shout her, shout her down, shut her down, make her go into a room protected by police while she cowers in fear. I'm so proud of my alma mater. Trans rights are human rights. No, everybody has a right to live free of dignity, uh, free of bigotry and with full dignity. My biological reality of being male means that I don't need to go with your appellation of I'm a cisgender male. No, I'm a biological male, full stop. My son is a boy. My daughter is a girl. My wife, who self-identifies as male, that's why I'm in a gay relationship, is a biological woman. She's not cisgendered. She's a woman. Men can't get pregnant. Men don't have periods stating so contrary to what the usc folks told me when they said that my speech should be regulated by the government because i say offensive things like men can get pregnant these are researchers at usc saying this S snap out of your stupor happy easter Ramadan and Passover. Cheers, everybody.